Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can, uh, can you hear my voice? Uh, let me get some feedback if you can hear my voice. Yes, you're loud and clear. Yeah. Yes, you're loud and clear. Okay. Yes. Hey, you guys uh -huh. sound. Yeah. You all sound strong and healthy this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, so yes, uh, it, I'm very, very happy to see all of you today. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to have you on our platform this morning. And um, without wasting time, it's already 10. Um, I'm going to go direct to uh, our agenda. And uh, uh, to start with, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Munduru Majuma, and uh, I'm a Lugbara. <laughs> I'm a Lugbara. The reason that's why I'm, I'm laughing and happy about that is because the facilitator we have today, this morning, um, Mr. Ita Joel is a Lugbara, and we are from the same clan. So that makes me happy. Yes, so um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, the times have really been hard, really, really been hard. Um, personally, um, it's, it's, it's really been hard. I should say it's really been hard. I've, uh, I've, I've seen many people that I know die, um, like the, since last week. Uh, the other week and this week, all my social media, every time I would open, I would just see, you know, rest in peace. This person has died. This person has died. My friends' uh, status is, you know, the, my, most of my friends have lost uh, their loved ones. So it's really been um, a hard time. And mentally, I've been a little tortured, but uh, through prayers, I'm okay. Also, you know, like, got a uh, strong flu and cough and so I got so scared but through treatment and prayers I'm doing well so I thank God for that hope you're all doing well and for those that have lost um, your loved ones our prayers are with you and uh, we pray for strength uh, without wasting any time I'll go uh, direct to uh, our welcoming remarks um, First, I'm going to introduce the, uh, the, my organization, uh, the, the, the host organization, which is Family Uplift Uganda. Family Uplift Uganda is uh, an organization that is into poverty alleviation. And myself, I'm the founder and the executive director. Our head offices are in uh, Ginger, Ginger City. And um, one of our programs that we do run you know, uh, in poverty elevation is this financial education program. And uh, we've, uh, we, we, we started this program in uh, 20, August 2020. Yes, and we've seen tremendous, tremendous impact in the lives of people when it comes to their personal financial lives, when it comes to building sustainable wealth. And with me, um, with our organization, we are partnering with uh, Femi Nature Uganda and uh, the Innovation Village. For those that know the Innovation Village. Yes, so uh, without wasting time, I'm going to invite um, the founder and executive director of uh, uh, Femi Nature Uganda, uh, Madame Annette Lekuru. You're going to introduce yourself and then after, um, if Gloria, you're online, Gloria from the Innovation Village, please. After Annette, you're going to introduce yourself and talk about Ali, talk, to, talk about uh, the Innovation uh, Village briefly, and then we'll uh, move forward. Thank you, Annette. Hello. 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 Annette uh, Hi. Femi Nature Uganda. Femi Nature Uganda is a women-led non-profit organization. We are based in Arua. Our offices at Christ the King Cafeteria. Uh, we do empowerment, socioeconomic empowerment for women. 
people, which is why it was very easy for us to partner with uh, Family Uplift Uganda and, and the Innovation Village in bringing you this um, uh, the financial literacy program, uh, particularly today with Mr. Aita Joel. And I urge all of you to listen in carefully. We will learn a few things from each other. And let's, let, let us take these things that we learn into action to improve our lives and that of our community. Thank you. Back to you, Mwajuma. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anit. Hey, Anit, you also look bara like me. So guys, <laughs> look bara taking over. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anit. Um, yes, Gloria, are you online? Gloria Ochels from the Innovation Village, please, uh, if you can talk to us. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure. Gloria, are you online? Oh, Charles. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, if Gloria, okay, if Gloria is not yet online, or Charles from the Innovation Village, um. I'll just go straight to talking about the program and why we are here. And then after, uh, that's when we'll have the, the, the man in the building, you know, uh, come to speak to us. So uh, this program, the financial education program is, um, it's a program that we, that we run both uh, physically and uh, online, just like we are doing. Uh, before COVID came, we used to have physical meetings and uh, we would have facilitators come and train people. So we train people, um, literally it's, it's, it's about personal finance. We do train about uh, financial, personal financial management, uh, in, but a very practical way. This is a practical program. Uh, we do personal financial management. We go down to real financial planning, you know, uh, real personal financial planning. Uh, we go into uh, setting goals, you know, financial goals. And then um, we go to investment. We do it in detail, okay? And uh, we also go into retirement. So we literally run topics or we run programs that, um, that help on building someone's personal financial life. And our goal is to build strong financial uh, disciplines, you know, in each and everyone's life, you know, because if you don't have strong financial disciplines, you know, at the end of the day, you will fail. Yeah. Many people um, don't take this thing of finance very, very serious. I'll give you an example about myself. Um, I always tell my friends and I always tell, um, you know, the people that I speak to that I studied finance and banking. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I studied. You know, I have a full degree in finance and banking, but it is so sad that even after, you know, graduating, I was financially illiterate. You know, for those that understand that, you know, you know, uh, I don't know if you do understand that you have a degree in finance and banking, like you are really good in finance and banking, but you uh, practically you are financially illiterate, you know. So when I got to realize that I was like, wow, I have to build some disciplines, some financial disciplines to see me grow. Uh, to see me grow in my finances and build sustainable wealth. So um, that's the reason as to why we are here. Um, to see to it that, you know, we find the right skills and the right knowledge to help us build sustainable wealth. We don't want any of us, you know, to, to be poor, you know. And poverty is not a good thing, you know. We want to build our financial lives for ourselves and for our loved ones. And that even when we grow old and we retire, that we will retire um, comfortably, okay? Yes, 
for the better of our lives, our families, and our nation at large, you know. For Uganda to be okay, for Uganda to um, for Uganda to thrive economically, it will start from us, you know, the citizens. So that's why we are here today. Um, without wasting, uh, we are having Mr. Joel Jaffa Aita in the building, in the house. Um, this is. Uh, but uh, this is a big man that I know, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to just uh, talk a little about what I know, um, a little about him, and then I'll let him, you know, talk more about himself because his profile is so big. It's so big that, you know, introducing him, you know, is uh, quite a hard job for me to do. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Mr. Uh, Aita Joel Jaffa is uh, the CEO of Joada Consultants. Uh, Joada Consultants is a big company. You know, these are people that uh, have built the modern new Mulago. Uh, it's, it's an amazing hospital. I think it's, uh, it's the modern hospital that we have in Uganda, like uh, the very modern one that we have now. And it's, Mr. Aita, who has built that. I also understand um, he's part, he, he was part of the contractors that built uh, the New Ginger Bridge. You know, for those that know the New Ginger Bridge, it's, it's the famous bridge that we have in Uganda, you know, apparently. Uh, he's the chairman, development infrastructure. Um, he's chairman, vendor capital. Uh, he's chairman, Arua Hill Sports Club. You know, it's one of these strong um, uh, football uh, clubs that we have in the country. And then what I know about him, like he's a very, very a good agripreneur. He's an agripreneur, like he's done it successfully. You know, someone who is running, uh, uh, he's, he's doing agriculture, you know, and he's really doing it very, very, uh, well, he does a uh, big scale, yes. And uh, one thing I know about uh, Mr. Joel is that he's a very humble man. Mm -hmm. Joel go on his and read through. He always writes every day, and I do follow. I do follow him every day. If you read, you know what he writes every day. You see that he's. Uh, He's a man of a big profile, like he has a big profile, but uh, he goes down to the little basics when it comes to building wealth. He's someone who will tell you, I, I sell grain, hmm? grain that is uh, maybe selling rice or selling uh, beans, you know, cereals and things like that. I'm like, okay, so this rich man goes down, you know, calculating the little profit he can get from selling grain. Yeah, so... Those little things humble, they really humble me, you know, about Mr. Joel. And we are so privileged to have him today. So, uh, Mr. Joel, you're most welcome, guys. We can give him a hand of applause. Thank so, you so much. Yes, uh, you're most welcome. Yeah. Doro. Yeah, and uh, I welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen, in uh, this morning chat. The topic was building sustainable wealth. I hope I'm clear. Can I be heard? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you're heard and you're clear. We are building sustainable wealth. Uh, I was just looking at uh, some definitions. I think we're not building, we're not wealth, but sustainable. Uh, the dictionary was saying it is able, something which is able to be maintained at a, at, at, at a, uh, something which is, let me read for you the actual dictionary, something which is able to be maintained at a certain rate and at a certain level. Now, uh, I think this topic has come out at the right time. Uh, during a lockdown, during a corona period, I really want to think that corona came to wake us up. Corona came to wake us up. So with, with, with sustainability 
I want to give you one example. They always say, for example, the money you have, or you're earning salary, or you're doing business, now that there is a lockdown and you're not doing anything, how are you, how, for how many months can you sustain using the same level you were before? Eating the same food you were eating before lockdown, uh, staying in the same house you're staying before lockdown. So that money you are having, how many months can it sustain you? Now that is where you should be able to know whether your wealth is sustainable or not. If your wealth can sustain you for at least three years, then your wealth is unsustainable. So just look down back and uh, think as, as you are now, if this lockdown had gone continuously for three, three years or one year or six months, or let's bring it to one month, can you be able to live your life like you are living? Let's bring it to only six months. Can you, with your money in your account, can you be able to live in the same house you're renting? Can you be able to eat the same food you're eating? If you're eating uh, meat two times in a, in a week, if you eat chicken two times in a week, if you are having some, whatever you're having, can you be able to leave it like that for another six months? If you are not, then that wealth is not sustainable. The method with which you're making your money is not a sustainable one. Let's just bring it for six months. I can assure you so many people will fail on that because you realize many are relying on salary and when this salary comes, maybe it's one million, by the end of the month, all the money is gone and you're waiting for the next month. Now, that is not sustainable wealth. That, that is why I think Corona came. Corona came to wake us up. Ever since we were grown, ever since we were born, I think we've never had anything like a lockdown. Personally, from 1980, when I was born, I've never had a lockdown. So this lockdown on any entrepreneurial side of view came to wake us up to tell us that the salary job you are having, or these are the business which you are having, which cannot sustainably take you for six months, doing the same lifestyle, then that what you do is not sustainable. Uh, many times I'll tell people that, that um, salary will really not take you far. However much that salary is, I think you can very well see, uh, like uh, my first job was 500,000 Ghanaian shillings, and I, I, I was surviving. I was staying there, I was paying my rent. My rent was, I think, 150,000. That was in ginger. I was uh, eating food. But at the end of the month, the money will get over and I'm waiting for the next salary. Then my salary increased to, I think, one million. My house went to around 300,000. Uh, I started going out a little bit more. Before the end of the month, that one million will also be finished. When my salary went to two million, my rent went to around 500,000. My expenditures also increased. So as a result, whether you are earning a big salary, if you're just depending on that salary alone, I can assure you it is not sustainable. It is not a sustainable way of building wealth. So what do you have to do now? You have to find a way of having something, a kind of an investment, which you have to put in place whereby every month you know uh, that this money is going to come to you, whether there is salary or no salary. So 
what do what does now one have to do one has to invest now for the easiest one people normally do is to invest in a, uh, in rentals putting up rental houses and then somebody knows at least every month I'm having some 500,000, 600,000, 700,000, which is coming. That is the easiest uh, uh, investment somebody can do in, which, which I will say is sustainable, although it's a slow uh, returning uh, investment. So that is one somebody can move into. Uh, others, uh, a little bit more complex, which people like to do, is going into treasury bills and treasury bonds where somebody is able to get a 10-year treasury bond, 50-year treasury bond, that is government securities, investing in government securities. Uh, interestingly, this is also another very, very safe one, which actually has also very good uh, return on your investment. Now, the other, which is a little bit complex, is where you become actually an entrepreneur, where you own a business, business. Now, Ugandans own a lot of businesses uh, that we know. I will not go a little bit more deeper into that. Maybe I'll go more deeper into that business you have. How can you work on it such that you are able to sustainably create wealth using that business? Uh, one, I would like to tell everyone that before even you start any business, if you really want to, you should know numbers. You should know numbers, arithmetic. You know, a wise man once said that you got, uh, people know how to read from zero to 10, from zero to 100. People know these figures, but people don't know how to use those figures. You should know how to use numbers. By numbers, what am I talking about? By numbers, I'm talking about uh, financial figures. So before you enter into any business, first do some financial figures. Not ju don't just enter into any business anyhow. I'll give you a typical example. Uh, we we're currently we're doing a stadium in, uh, in Arua, but we had to do figures, we had to do numbers. We had to calculate the total square area of this stadium, and then the total square area of the businesses. And then we calculated, if we sell the businesses, how much, how many businesses shall we sell to be able to give us a return on investment within a year or within two years? That is how to work on numbers. Another numbers you can work on is population figures. Now, Uganda, we are now close to around 45 million people. Uh, uh, by the 50 years from now, the, the population will more than double. Now, one thing all of us will accept is that everyone of this population eats. We're not talking about agriculture. We're talking about eating food, food which people are going to eat. Now, that is one business where it is not going to end. The children eat, the adults eat, the poor people eat, the rich people eat. In, in, interestingly, you'll find even in, in most cases, the poor ones eat more than the rich ones. Hmm? The, 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 the sick ones eat, the healthy ones eat. So that is one business where you cannot go wrong year in, year out. I'm not talking about agriculture. I'm talking about food. There's a, there's a, a big difference in that. Business, food business, dealing in food business, that is one business you will not go wrong. The population will keep on increasing. The demand of food will keep on increasing. Now, here in Uganda, we really don't appreciate that kind of business. But because here you can just throw in, a, you, you can throw your crop and the next day you harvest it. 
but I've gone into a number of African countries where growing food is a tug of war. You spend money to grow food. But for a businessman, you can get the farmer, come into in between and calculate these numbers to do business. Two, you need to find very, very good people to work with. Very good people as, first of all, as your staff, staff with which you can work on. And then you can find good people as partners. I'll give you another example again. We, when we started the stadium project, I'm not really good at making people, forcing people to work. Workers, these construction workers. So that's why I'm more in consultancy. Consultancy is easy to manage. But now we're going to go into actual construction. So I found out one partner whom I knew is very good at making people to work. So I got him, he became my CEO, and I gave him shares in the company. We registered the company, he had shares in this company, and he became the CEO. Now, that stadium is as it is up to this level because of this CEO. I really believe if I did it myself, if I, if I was the one on site, it was not going to work. So find very good people as your business partners, find very good people as your workers. Now, sometimes finding good people as partners and workers can mean to be a big tug of war, but sometimes it is trial and error. Uh, ours we went through by training students. From 2008, we've been training students from different universities. So whenever they come, they train with us and we identify very good staff there. Now that way you will find the moment you have good people in your company, you will not go wrong. So that is one important thing you need to get if you want to start making sustainable uh, wealth using entrepreneurship, using your company. You must, first of all, understand numbers very well. You must ensure you have good people in place. And then three, build systems right from the beginning, right from when your company is starting, start building systems. Because the more it grows, the more it becomes very difficult to build systems in your company. So you have to set up systems in place. Who is doing what? Who is doing the other one in this company? And let the system run this company. Now, once you, you do that, I can assure you even way after you are gone, the company will still be running. But if your company is all about you, or your name is more than the company, then you know there's a problem. I remember at the beginning, people refer me as Joel, but now people, re most of my clients call me Joada. Uh, I hope you're getting me. Most of, most of my clients now call me Joada. They actually write in their phones my name as Joada. Now that is starting to show to me that the company is now getting bigger than me. The company is getting bigger than me because they're not identifying me using the company. So that is one of the things you need to do in place, build systems. Then master the art of pitching. Now for your business to be sustainable, you need to always be getting jobs. Now for you to get jobs, you need to understand pitching, business pitching. Okay, I'll give you a typical example. You are maybe a contractor or a supplier and we meet with you in the lift. And you know, I have some project I'm supposed to be giving you. And the lift is going to roll with us for like two minutes. What are you going to tell me in those two minutes which will make me to follow you again? which will make me want to give you a job. That is mastering pitching. Two minutes, say something about your company. Now for this to be able to be possible, 
one of the things you need to do is to first do your research before you meet this potential client. Do your research. What do they want? What do they want? Uh, what are their uh, what are their preferences? And then what can you offer for them? So you need to master the art of pitching. When you present to people, do you convince them? Now that is going to be very important. And then fourthly, networking. This I like to talk about it quite a lot. Networking. They always say your network is equal to your net worth. Your network is equal to your net worth. Unfortunately, many people like to say that so and so is getting a job because he has the connections. He has the networks. Now, who has stopped you from having that connection? Who has stopped you from having that network? No one is actually born with that, that network. You have to build it over time. You have to, a, a lot will depend on the, the, the people you decide to have around you. There are people you have around you who like to ce celebrate average success. Now, if those are the kind of people around you, you are, you're gonna be in trouble. You should have people who challenge you, positive challenge. People who want to see something good coming out of you. That is one group of people you should have if you want to build a very, very strong net network. Don't have people who like to laugh about your jokes. Recently, I was buying, I was buying rice in Porongo. So I asked the, uh, the, the people who are selling, I said, where is so-and-so? They said, uh, so, so today is not around, you know, we're missing him. He normally tells us a lot of jokes. Now that is where a problem starts. If the people around you are the ones who laugh at your jokes, then you're having very wrong people. But the people who should tell you, Augustine, or Wilbert, let's go and have this business discussion. Not people who are going to tell you, uh, Rose, let's go and have Caesar, or let's go and drink. You know, those are not the people who are going to have a network. The network I'm not talking about is not network for drinking. I have a friend of mine, every time, five o'clock, they're going out in a bar. Five o'clock, dot, he's leaving office. They're going out to a bar. Now they'll drink up to like midnight, then get back home. Now that is not the network I'm talking about. The network I'm talking about is the network of people with whom you will sit down and you are discussing business. Now you need to build that network. And this network is built through conferences, through attending meetings, through just, just go and meet somebody. You can't believe how easy these guys are. Actually, I've come to realize most of the people who have genuine money, they're the most easiest people to deal with. You'll approach him, he'll give you time. You need to be optimistic, very, very optimistic. If you want to make your company to build sustainable wealth, optim optimism is a very, very important. I remember in 2008, uh, we are not even got a job uh, as a company in Uganda. We are just registered in Uganda. So with, because there was no job, I sat down and I was sketching down uh, Jawada Uganda, Jawada Kenya, uh, Jawada Tanzania. So I listed 10 countries. So this friend of mine passed by, he, he saw, uh, he just wondered. So until recently, he calls me because he had seen that uh, I had invited the, the, the vice president of uh, Liberia in Uganda. So he calls me and said, hey, you man, 2008, when I saw you writing, uh, when I saw you writing those different countries, I thought you were running crazy. Uh, can, we, can we mute? Everyone mute your, your, mute your computer, please. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, thank you. Um, so, 
2008, we hadn't got a job in Uganda, but I was already listing nine countries, I mean, 10 countries in which we want to be doing business. Now, 13, 14 years down the road, I think we're now in six countries where we're doing business. For me, I think that was optimism. We were very optimistic by that time, even when we didn't have any single job. Then number seven, which I like so much to talk about, is imaging and branding. Many times we start businesses, by the end of one year, 90% of those businesses have collapsed. One of the reason is we just enter into the crowd. You enter into the crowd. You don't enter in this business with a bank. Now you enter in a crowd, you disappear in that crowd. By the end of the one year, you have not got any single job. You are disappointed. You leave the job. But if you can have this thing called image or branding, very, very clear right from the beginning, let me tell you, you will enter into that business with a bank. I'll give you just one example. My former boss, a German, told me that, you see, when you're making tender documents, other people are going to do spiral binding. For you, do a box file. There are these quite big box files. So that alone is just even going to show the client that you're actually very different from the rest. Now, that is entering in a different way. So we, we, we bid it for a job, that time in Pujagali, and there were around 20 companies. We just had the two years experience and uh, they were now opening the bid. Everyone uh, spiral binding, everyone spiral binding. When they reached our bid, we had a very huge box. They removed these box files. And I remember this guy, when he removed, he's an American. When he removed the bid, he said, wow, these ones I think are ready for this job. Just because of the file. He still doesn't know even what is inside there. I, uh, there was a competitor next to us. He turned to me, he said, uh, which country are you guys from? I said, uh, we're actually here from Uganda. We've never heard about you. Yeah, he's, he'd never heard about us because we're, <laughs> we're just two years into experience. We're not done a lot. But the way we branded, just our box file alone, set us apart. So branding is very, very important. Uh, I, I, I like to tell you about that story of uh, Jomai. Some of you have heard about it. My, one of my first jobs, National Water had linked me with Jomai. I reached there uh, on a border border, but the border mother left me on the way because of fuel. And then I walked. Reaching the owner of Jomai, the man looked at me. He said, so are you the consultant? He had expected a consultant to drive in a very, very big car. But because I went walking, what did they agree to pay me 60 million? The guy cut it to 40 million. I lost 20 million. Let me tell you that money pained me. This was my first money. That money pained me, but he was right. He asked me, what do you do with your money? So the image, the image I gave him as a company, the image I gave him as an individual was not worth 60 million. So your company needs to have that straight away from the beginning. Your social media presence, your company profiles. I remember I went to the top 20 consultancy companies in the world. I told my IT guy, if my website is not looking like any of these top 20 consultancy firms, I'm not paying you. The guy tried, but had no jobs. Companies, their jobs looked very, I mean, their website looked very big because it looked very nice because they were putting these huge projects, Dubai Airport, they were putting whatever. I, we didn't have any job. But I told this guy, my website must look like those 20 companies. Now, that is part of the branding. He tried. He tried, but uh, really, there was nothing much he could do. But along the way, it kept on moving. So imaging is going to ensure more jobs. 
image will keep on ensure you are above the rest. You are totally above the rest. Then you be innovative and unique. That one we've talked about it under image and branding. Make sure you are always totally different. Your ideas are totally different. Whatever you are doing with your company, is it unique? Now I'll give you another example. We, we tried to bid for other jobs, we were failing. This was 2008. Then I went and gave a proposal to hospitals because at that time I heard that hospitals were going to start doing infrastructure projects. I gave them a proposal to do infrastructure master plans. Let me tell you that projected us totally. We ended up doing all master plans in regional fire hospitals across the country. We ended up doing the master plan for Mulago Hospital. And as, as I speak now, I think it's really among the best, uh, the best two or if, I, I, don't, I don't want to say the best one. I will have said actually the best one, uh, the best hospital consultant in, in, in this country. But it started in 2008 just with a unique proposal, an innovative proposal of uh, doing that. Then another is look at problems as money. Now, many times I like doing the same, same, same things. So as a result, you find you are entering into a business. You, you guys are too many. And yet, Ugandans love complaining. A lot on social media. They are always complaining. Now, what if you look at one of those complaints they're raising? You turn it into business. Say, people are complaining about this. How can I supply them? I will still give you that example of the stadium. Uh, we're going to play, uh, we're playing football. Arua had an empty ground, it, it even didn't have grass. We hurt ourselves, and then people started complaining. Ah, how can a municipal not even plant grass here? So uh, yeah, I gave that. That could be because they are one of uh, those people who have been like, put on, put on they're mute. Laughing, but smiling, but their oxygen saturation is extremely low. Now we need to understand that. Um, okay, good. Okay. Uh, so, when we looked at uh, this uh, problem of the football field, I gave an assignment to the students. Said, come up with a design of a stadium. How a stadium can be built in this area, but then the design should be in such a way that the stadium should be self-funded. So we now had the stadium inside and business park outside. We looked at a problem. Instead of complaining about this problem, we looked at it as business. Now, when you go to Arua, we now have a stadium coming up with a business park. The business park, we have sold it to, to people. That is where we'll recover our investment. Looking at problem as money. Then we talked about the company you keep the type of people you have around you. That one, I always tell you people, be very, very careful about it. The type of people you have around you. Now, I'll give you a very simple example again. When we brought in the vice president of Liberia here, you can't believe the type of businesses people are calling me with. Not small ones, big, big, big businesses. Just because they show us with the vice president of Liberia, everyone is calling me. Say, uh, we have this business, we will take it to Liberia. Can you be our partner there? We have this business, we'll take it. So far, I've met around 10 different business people and we're going with them too, to Liberia. So the type of person you keep around you matters a lot. The company, that network you keep, you should start uh, resuffling it right now if you really want to go very, very far. And uh, promise less and deliver more. That's our rule. Many times we start our businesses, we talk big, we make huge promises, 
But then when it comes to delivery, that is where problems start. And if you want to grow sustainably, the mindset, you actually, you cannot do a 100 million business with a mindset of 1 million. As your business is growing, you need to start changing your mindset. You started doing your business with 1 million to 10 million. Then you're blessed, you, you, you hit a big jackpot of 100 million, and you're still having the same mindset. Now, that mindset will kill you. It will kill that business you are starting. So the mindset, you need to start changing from a 100 million mindset to 1 billion mindset. So that way, your business will be sustainable. You'll be able to move that business to another level. And the, lastly, I will say, the social media age, we have, we have, we have, the youth of now are actually very, very, very advantaged. Because of social media, you can start your business inside social media and succeed with it. You can start your business inside social media and succeed with it. I'll give you another example. We started a uh, planned estate in, also in Arua. Within one week, we were able to sell 150 plots on Facebook and WhatsApp. We never went to radio, we never went to new, new TV, we never went to newspapers. The only thing I remember was spending $50 to boost our advert on Facebook. $50 within one week, actually it was less than one week, it was four days. That was a Tuesday, Wednesday up to Saturday, we were able to sell 150 plots, but we had 100 plots. We had to rush and bought more land in that estate to accommodate the 50 people. So we were oversubscribed by 150%. People ended up buying, and this was purely through social media. So if your business is not on Facebook, then know you're in trouble. If your business is not on Facebook, then know you are not reaching the buyers. How are you reaching? If you're not on WhatsApp groups, how are you advertising your businesses? Why are you spending one, two million of money to advertise in newspaper, which only uh, few people will see. Meanwhile, you could for free advertise on Facebook and 10,000 people are seeing it. So your presence on social media for business is very, very important in this, in this age. So look at those points for you to be able to have a sustainable business. If you are just earning salary alone, that is not very, very sustainable at all. It is not sustainable. Whether you're earning 10 million, 20 million, whether you're earning 30 million, the, the demand will always keep on increasing. So your salary will not be able to meet that. But if you can be able to put this uh, money into any investment, then you can start on working well. I met some youth recently, gave them a very small example. Um, doing real estate. Real estate is one of the most uh, quickest way through which you can make money, but not uh, what the Jomayas are doing. These ones are brokers. Uh, these ones are selling plots. But real estate, you have to, first of all, master plan. You plan that estate. You, every, every plot has a definition. It has a design. It has how many trees you have to plant. It has the color of the roof you're supposed to put. Now that is pure real estate. Now with that real estate, you can easily make money. I can tell you right now, we, we come from different cities here. Some people come from Barara, others are coming from Arua, others come from Lira, 
others come from Gulu. If you go into these towns, you can be sure there are no planned estates. If they're there, maybe one or two. Gulu does not have, Arua does not have, uh, Lira does not have. You go to Moyo does not have. You come to oh, most of these towns. Now, that is one of the easiest way through which you can make your money. And you don't have to buy these very expensive uh, lands. You can go 10 kilometers out of town, buy a big chunk of land there. You guys can do it as a group. You buy a chunk of land where an acre is still going for 1 million, 15 kilometers out of Barara town, 10 kilometers out of Arua town. You buy like a 50 acres, you can start with 20 acres, you can start with 10 acres. As long as you plan this uh, land properly and it has a master plan, it has a 3D, people are able to see this is how the city or I mean the estate will look like, they will come running. Because people want to live in, I, I rather live 10 kilometers out of town, but in a planned estate than to live uh, in a, to, to live in, in town uh, in, in, in a very, very disorganized slum. So most of the allies, that's where they're moving. So we can be able to come together, 20 people, you're earning a salary of 1 million. Let, let's say you guys are 20 people, you're earning a salary of 1 million, and you decide to say, let's be saving 200,000 every month. Now, when you guys save this money, for like three years, you can't believe the amount of money you're going to put in place. Now, this money, you can now pick it, you go and buy a plot, you go and buy land. This land, you divided them into estates. That is the quickest way you guys can make your money. I can assure you, it is the quickest way guys can make money, but make sure you design it, make sure you master plan it. That way, you'll be able to go very, very far. Then, the money you now make from there, you can now start pushing it to other businesses. Uh, maybe rentals, maybe putting into uh, uh, forex, uh, meaning, meaning treasury bonds and all that. But the quickest one through which you can make that money will be through organized real estate. And if we can do that across Uganda, Arua is already doing it. If Guru can start doing, if Mbarara can start doing, if Lera can start doing, that is how we'll develop these towns. Now you will be amazed how the, the speed at which people rush to go and buy these properties. Somebody called, when we opened up ours, somebody called me, said, you have not yet opened, but I've already deposited money for five plots. They already deposited five plots. They were actually the ones who caused the, these things to be over, oversubscribed. People will always come running for it if you plan your estate properly. So that way you can now move into other businesses. But basically, I will advise that you move into entrepreneurship if you really want to have, uh, if you want to build uh, sustainable wealth. Uh, again, I will continue saying salary will not take you very far, but this salary, you can put it, you can save it to invest. Again, don't just save to save. You save to invest. But make have, have a long ball. You see, some of our challenges is that we want some things to be done now, now. But you can actually have a plan, a, 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 a four-year plan. And you guys come five, six people. These are guys you know each other. And they say, you know what? I'm earning one million shillings. Uh, I can afford to remove 300,000. Now for you, you know, we're going to save this money for the next three to four years. And we'll be doing this particular thing we do. So have a long ball if you're earning salary. Don't look at now. Have a long ball and then look at a number of people. You see, when, it, when you come as a group, you'll be able to do a lot of uh, savings. And then once this money becomes big, 
uh, you can be able to uh, have this money uh, uh, to do something which is uh, which is big. That way, you will be able to move. So uh, there, there are quite a number of questions people have asked in the inbox. I think I will go through some of them. Uh, I think to not to overload, I will propose let's have our yeah. questions in the in inbox so that so that it can easily. So many. Uh, yes, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Jawada. <laughs> Yes. yes, I don't want to call you Joe. Now I want to call you Joada. <laughs> Mr. Joada, thank you so much. Um, I'm saying, uh, yes. guys, uh, please kindly uh, write your questions in the chat group um, so that, you know, as Mr. Joada continues, you know, to speak to us, we can just easily, um, we can just easily read uh, the questions. Um, uh, Mr. Joel, I think let me just uh, help on reading a few for you. Yeah. Um, I'll start with. Um, uh, okay, there is someone who Kalsum Agad. I hope I've read your name well. Uh, okay, Kalsum is requesting for um, a topic on how to start a business. Okay, that is not a question. We'll get back to you. Um, there is uh, Ismail Bumba. He says, how does a person like me earning 1M monthly, 1 million monthly, uh, with an expenditure of 700 and 800,000 be able to save? Um, I think to, uh, to save Mr. Jawada from this, um, uh, this is a question that goes, uh, that is about financial management. And yes. uh, uh, I think this, let me speak uh, to everyone. If you have any question in line with financial management, you know, how you can handle your money, how you can save from the little that you have. Um, I was going to pass on this announcement after the uh, after Mr. Jawada, but we are launching the Financial Education Academy next month. Uh, Mr. Jawada, I will let you through that. I will tell you more about the academy. We've seen a very great need, you know, um, uh, among among us Ugandans, you know, and East African people, uh, when it comes to financial management and uh, things to do with uh, personal finance. So we are launching the academy next month, and we are going to put it out on social media. So if you have any issue regarding your finances, please sign in into the academy. Um, there is one, one question I saw down here. Okay. Uh, this is from Ajiga Mansu. Hello, Joel. What is your advice to people who are swallowed by employment, earning salaries and fearing life without salary, knowing so well it has no guarantee but can't move out of it? I think, Mr. Joada, you can <laughs> emphasize. Yes. On, you, know. uh, you can read like four yeah. questions, two more. Okay. Um, uh how best can a small business that is still still gaining stability stay afloat amid the pandemic that's a very good question for uh such a season so yeah um fahad bruhan junior says what do you suggest on building wealth especially ge the the generational aspect part of it most, most wealth creations in, Afri in Africa die after the first owner dies. How can one make sure that they've started, especially in family aspect, last for generations? So okay. Mr. Fahad is asking about building generational wealth. Okay. Um, yeah. I think, let me answer this first. Yes. Mm. Yeah, first of all, uh, let me start with the, the last one, then I go upwards. Generation wealth. Um, Indians are very good in it, but uh, Africans are very, very bad in it. If you follow most of Indian businesses, whether here in Uganda or, or in India or elsewhere, they will tell you our great, great, great grandfather studied this business 200 years back, 100 years back. 
So there is, there is always generation after generation. But for us here in Uganda, you realize immediately when the owner of the business dies like this, fight starts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wife, the wife number one with his kids, they start fighting. Wife number two with the kids, problems generally start. But now, when you look at uh, the way Indians do business, when you observe them slowly, you realize this Indian with his scooter, they call them scooters, isn't it? With his scooter, yeah. will carry the wife and a small boy who is in primary school. They will ride with him in the morning, very early, they take him to class, school. After dropping the kid to school, they come back to work. They start working. At around lunchtime, they go and pick this kid. The, 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 the son will go, I mean, the father will go and pick the kid and bring him at workplace. And the little boy will just be there as the father and, and, and mother are, are busy working. And this boy will be seeing the, the father and the mother picking these coins, 100 shillings coin, 100 coin, 500 coin, and see how these people are treating the clients. He'll be seen. Then at six o'clock, they'll jump back on their scooter and drive back home, ride back home. And they will do that continuously. Now, innocently, this boy is learning business. He's seeing money right from childhood. He grows seeing money. And then after that, they will uh, they, they get they, when the man finishes his school or, or he goes to university. During holiday, he comes back. He's in the business. So they basically grow in this business. Now, African fathers, the man, the, the kid is not even willing to touch anything. They're not allowed. You don't allow your kid to be near your business. He's not supposed to. He doesn't even know what is going on. He doesn't go for meetings. So all of a sudden, the guy reaches, he's now big, he has finished university. You now want to start introducing to the business because you are getting tired, you are getting sickly, and then you die. This boy is not used to money. He has just gotten into money. What do you expect? The guy runs crazy. He starts driving the latest cars. Hmm? The father has died. He starts driving the latest cars. He has like three Mercedes bench. He's building new houses. He's starting to marry two, three, four girls. Hmm? Now the business starts collapsing. Two, three years down the road, the business has died. So if you want to build generational wealth, we have to start now. We have to start now. Just before this lockdown happened, my kids, I have, I have four kids. My kids, I set up for them a place in office here. I set them a desk, desk for four people. One kid is uh, 13 years, the last one is six years. So every day they are going to start coming here and one of my staff was going to start teaching them uh, architecture, teaching them how to design houses. These young kids, and I put them on salary. I was going to start paying them salary. So immediately after lockdown, that's what I want to do. Let them come back, uh, the driver will drop them, uh, every morning at work, they work up to three, then they go back home. Now, whenever I meet clients, I want to get them. Like I've seen two of my kids, they, they like design so much. So I'll get them, they come and attend when we're having meetings with these clients. Now that way, these guys will start growing and understanding this business. They will pick interest and want to become engineers and want to become designers. There's one who said he wants to become a lawyer. So I'll start making her to start reading these contract documents. Now, 
these kids will start growing in your business when they are still very young. They start understanding this business. So by the time you are gone, like for me, uh, when I reach 60 years, I really want to retire. I've, I've worked so, so, so much. I started working so much when I was young. So by 60, I really want to retire. And that is 19 years from now. 19 years from now, I'll be hitting 60. I want to retire. So these kids, so by that time, be able to understand my company very well. They will be inside it. Now they can continue with this company. So if we want to build generational wealth, we should start them now. The generation, they should start learning now. And how best to a small business struggling cope with this pandemic? Uh, really, it's a, it's a very, very difficult period for, for everyone, not just for small businesses, even for very, very big businesses. I've seen uh, so many businesses which are running bankrupt. Big, big multinational businesses are, are, are collapsing. But uh, I think right now, it should be more of survival. It should be on survival mode, not on thriving mode. What does survival mode say? Survival mode is being alive, just be alive. So they, one of the first things for you to be alive is to ensure you cut your costs, cut as much as possible. If it means reducing the number of staff, you may have to reduce the number of staff, or you can tell all the staff who are not reducing, but who are cutting salaries, maybe by 50%. So reduce as much cost as possible so that you should be surviving. Hoping that this lockdown will not go for long, then we can look at thriving. But if you start putting in a little bit of that money you are having, back into the business. You want to invest here, you want to push there, you want to study this. There are a lot of surprises which will be waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So for, for now, I will say, tune to survival mode, completely tune to survival mode. That way you will be able to move on when this uh, pandemic uh, gives us uh, some way. Uh, that is what we're doing as a, as, a, as a company. We are on survival mode, ensuring we reduce a lot of our costs. Like right now, I've made everyone to work from home. I think only two or three people who are working in office, everyone is working from home. Now that way, we have been able to cut almost all costs related with transport and feeding. Because every day I was feeding everyone in office. I had to give them transport. So everyone is working in uh, at home. Only two, actually two people who are actually working in, in office. So right now, the quickest answer I'll give you is tune your survival mode. That way you'll be able to move on very far. What advice do you give uh, to somebody who's employed? That one I can, add, I can answer it together with the uh, proposal, the, the one million. Um, I'm earning one million, what can I do? I, I always tell people, unfortunately in Uganda, uh, uh, cooperatives are not working very well. Or they call them circles. Circles are not working very well. But if you look at uh, a country like Kenya, Kenya has one of the most mm. successful circles. Yeah. Uh, Kenya has one of the most successful circles. And the, what normally happens with this is, like I'd given an example earlier on about uh, real estate, was that these guys put their money together because there are many people, they save this money together, and after a period of time, they invest it. Like, let me just give you a typical example. The one I love most is that one of real estate. Uh, if you can organize yourself, 30 people and each one of you is able to save only 200,000 per month. Only 200,000 per month. 
And if you save this money continuously for four years, you will have 288 million by those 30 people. Now, these 30 people, they decide to go and say, let's invest in it. Real estate, I want to give you the calculations. Now you go and with your 288 million, you identify land 10 kilometers out of town. And that land, one acre is giving you 2 million, 2 million. There you will be able to get 144 acres. Let's even say seven, let's say seven acres, I mean 70 kilometers out of town, and you're getting at five million. Now that land will give you 57, that money will give you 50, 57 acres. Now this is as a group. Now, if you decide to plot these 57 acres you will get approximately, if you put them at 50 by 100 feet, you will get approximately, uh, you will get approximately seven plots. Let's make six plots. Let's leave others for greeneries and roads. You will get around six plots per acre. Now that will give you 345 plots. You have 57 acres which you have bought at 288 million. That is 5 million per acre after four years. Now, 30 of you decide to award yourselves one plot per person. That is 30 plots. You are left with 315 plots. Now, you must plan this estate properly properly master plan that these 300 plots, they are having maybe 10 different designs. So that one design for 30 plots, you say this area, we're going to have 30 houses and these houses are looking similar. The other area, 30 houses, these houses are looking similar. So you have 10 different designs. Now, you have already given yourself 30 plots you are left with 315 plots as a group. With that design, I can assure you, if you charge each plot 5 million shillings, it will not last. All those 300 plots within a month, it will be bought out. Whether in Arua, whether in Guru, whether in Lira, whether in... Now, you multiply that by 5 million. Do you know how much that is coming to? 1 billion 575 million. That is what you are 288 million you have saved in just four years has been able to raise for you. I'm not, I'm not speaking theoretical things. I'm speaking what we have done. I'm speaking what we have done. Now let's say you are so extravagant and you spent 400 million to work on the plot, to work on the everything and everything, including your 288, getting the titles and all that. Your net profit after four years will be 1.1 billion, 700, 1.1 billion, 75 million. 1 billion 175 million after four years. Now, 1 billion 175 divided by 30 people. That would be 39 million per person. You'll have had a plot, and each one of these is sharing 39 million shillings. That is if you just said, let this be a one off. After four years, you will have saved the money, you will have had a plot and 39 million shillings. And you can decide to put these 39 million shillings to build a low cost house 
on that plot. And you are just saving how much? 200,000. I believe most of us, if not all of us in this chat here, if we target it, we can be able to save 200,000 every month. Now, just like I said earlier, have a long ball, play, play long ball. Don't look at one year, six months. Do a four year plan and get friends. People, people who are not going to cheat, get friends. Only 30 of them, you can be able to make 1.5 billion in that project. Assuming we, we, we started this two years ago, we'll have already saved half of that money, but we can start it now. So with that salary or with the, that employment of yours, it will be very difficult to do it as an individual or alone because expenditures always keep on increasing. Your kids are growing from primary school, they're not going to secondary school. The salary is, in, I mean, the institution is increasing. So you may not be able to do that alone. But if you can get yourself in a group and you plan, the easiest way you will make that money will be through real estate. And you can decide to say, okay, we have now made 1.175 billion and we're going to share around 39, let's say 40 million each. Let's not share all that 40 million. Let's keep 20 billion, million each in the back in the investment. Now, that will mean you are going to be left with around the 600 million in the investment. And you have shared amongst yourself the other 600 million, which you did through real estate. And this is saving continuously 200,000 shillings every month for four years. Four years looks very, very long until when you start. We just started recently as a former classmates. We started recently as a former classmates of engineering. Now, we're now approaching 200 million. Now we have now sat down, how are we going to invest this money? And one of the areas we're looking at is actually to invest it in real estate. We're trying to target this land in Kasanje. Kasanje, if some of you know, that is a, another area which is picking up very, very well. So we're targeting to put up uh, an estate in Kasanje and we're, we're only 40 people, 40 people, classmates, and we've been saving money and we've now saved 200 million. One person could have raised that money amongst ourselves, those engineers, like this. But we decided to say, no, let's just be saving 300,000 shillings every month. And that's what we've been doing. Now we are approaching 200 million. So we're now looking at what we can be able to do with that money. So as a salary earner, as an employed person, get yourselves in groups. Once you've got yourselves in groups, start consistently saving that money. And the easiest way you will put it is through real estate. You have a plot for yourself and you have some money for yourself. That way you will go very far. Any other questions? Yeah, um, Mr. Joada, uh, thank you so much for uh, those uh, that feedback. Um, what I'm seeing, uh, there are really very, very many questions. Like, it's really overwhelming in the chat uh, group, uh, but also mostly, uh, you know, in our private, uh, you know, um, uh, we are getting many uh, direct messages. Yeah, yes. but uh, what I've done is uh, I'm seeing that uh, many people have categorized uh, some questions. Many people are into financial management. You know, people have issues with managing their finances. And then um, what I've uh, also realized is uh, there are people that really need knowledge on uh, building businesses, starting businesses and maintaining them, you know, and uh, to that, I will add, uh, I will, because of time, I will encourage us to really look, uh, look out for us. 
uh, the academy is opening next month. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm going to talk to Mr. Joel Av and talk to him about it. But I know in one way or the other, he will come through for the academy and uh, you get to, to meet him, you know, in the academy, hopefully. Yes, yeah, so for questions on financial management, please look out uh, for this, uh, for the academy. We are opening early next month where you will be taught in detail, like how um, we are going to work with you, like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, let you through the whole financial management uh, um, uh, session and work with you and build, you know, those good financial disciplines, you know, in your life so that you will not only um, live, you know, uh, with that survival mentality, but have these disciplines to build sustainable wealth. Remember, we are talking about sustainable wealth. You need to build your foundation, okay, in a very strong way. And so you need these disciplines, okay? So we advise that uh, come for these lessons. We are going to work with you on a daily basis, weekly basis, and monthly basis. Um, uh, there is one question that I really wanted at least uh, to, to forward. Uh, to Mr. Joada, um, um, uh, just a second. Okay, there is a question from Nyakuta, Patrick. Uh, this question is, how do you guide on kickbacks before you are given contract? I do have uh, Palm Mill Group Limited that deals in farm produce and seedlings. I lost business opportunities because I said no to kickbacks. Uh, maybe if you can, we can have only that question. And uh, for the rest maybe, that uh, have, have had- Maybe what you can do, you can add two more. Okay. Uh, uh, there are some questions that I really feel like, um, mm. uh, okay, let me, let me, let me get, let me get, um, Okay, uh, of course, some people are asking for your contact. If you're okay with that, Mr. Joel, you can just uh, yeah, uh, write it in the right. feed. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, uh, there is a uh, Ezabo Baron who asked, how, how can we deal with peer, peer pressure where our colleagues always expect us to live fancy life, yet we are focusing our little resources on some sort of investment. I think that goes back to building strong financial disciplines so yeah, I've, um, been, I've been able to yeah. send my uh, so telephone number I, yeah yeah based on a, okay on, on whatsapp sometimes calls can be a headache for me <laughs> you find sometimes yeah. in meetings you're not able to uh, pick all the calls but if you send your messages on whatsapp normally it's easy. So uh, I've been able to send for you my telephone number there. Yeah, uh, peer pressure is definitely mm. <laughs> a lot. Uh, but uh, if you really know what you want to do, mm. you be definitely doing whatever you, you are supposed to do. Like I remember at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, my friends were building their houses in Nerua. I was not. Hey, people were asked, but you know, your friend has built, how comes you have not it built? That was 2010, 2011, eh? You know, you can easily be misled. You get your money from the company and put it into some of those things. And before you know it, your company is, is losing balance. Uh, some will go out, uh, partying, they're moving everywhere. As an entrepreneur, let me tell you, there are so many things you love to forfeit. There are so many things you love to forfeit at the beginning to make your business stable. Uh, others, will, others will go out, uh, drink every evening at five o'clock. Most of my friends go out at five o'clock, but now you have a proposal. You have a proposal to send tomorrow by eight. Do you go with them? You don't go. So you have to uh, make sure you know what you want to do. So that peer pressure, uh, one day they will come back to you. There will be a, definitely a very clear difference. 
So you shouldn't uh, be able to move into that. Uh, then secondly, you know, when you, there, there are always two things which happen, especially in tender business. You either give money out and offer very substandard services, or you offer very, very good services and you're known for that. At least that is what Jawada has done at this stage. You get to know us, you give us a job because we are going to offer for you a service which other companies are not offering. And that's what we're offering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you. Uh, put on, put on. Mr. Pareo, Mr. Pareo, put on a mute. Mr. Pareo, Thank you. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you, you will have to be very, very careful on that. You give out and you don't perform. But if people get to know you uh, as my, my, my best company was uh, Rocco. Rocco will tell you I will do for you the job. And uh, this is the money I want. He's actually the one who will ask for the money. So at the beginning, that was what I was looking at. So offer quality services. People will come and run in. People come to run for you. That way you can be able to navigate a number of these areas. And that way you'll also have bigger profits, but you don't necessarily go out and you offer a very bad quality services to people. So you will find once US is about offering quality products, quality services, people will always come running to you. So that is what you should do. Others will not come to you definitely, but if you are there to offer quality service, they will come. Others will come grumbling. Uh, so and so is like this, but anyway, he will give us the right thing. <laughs> we will not go to, we will not go to, uh, we will not go to audit to the auditors. Mm -hmm. So if you can be able to put that, and um, I, I think really we've taken one one and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can, yeah. We can be able to talk and talk, but uh, I, I will really yeah. think such kind of uh, discussions will be more often. Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily uh, me. We can also have another person. One other person I wanted us yeah. to bring on board is my, my very good friend Amos Wekesa. Uh, cool, I could link up. Wow. Him. Uh, could link up with him. Wow. We have him on board. Uh, so that this yeah. group, we can be able to discuss together also with this group. So if yeah. we can have yeah. more frequent kind of discussions, uh, luckily enough, most of these people in this group here, we have, we, we have contacts with them. So we can always yeah. throw it in a WhatsApp group and throw it in a, mm. uh, Facebook. So I'm sure yeah. we can be able to get each other. So Mr. Mm. Mondoro, if you can be able to Spearhead this. Uh, at least uh, every month we have a discussion. Yeah. Bring in somebody uh, before you know one or two entrepreneurs are coming out from here. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, had a, I had a friend of mine, he really made my day. He made my day this week. Huh? Uh, one time I posted about how your CV should look completely different. Mm -hmm. This man is going to record it. He went and worked on his CV properly. And uh, this week he told me, do you know what? I got a job when I did my CV, as you had told us. You should have seen how excited and how happy I felt. I think this week that was my biggest happiness I had. Hmm? Now, that means out of all these things we're doing, we can always get somebody out. Hmm? Now, get somebody out, he has started his business, and he's employing two, mm -hmm. three, four, five people. By, by the time, these are, these are 100 people, this is a very big number. Hmm? Uh, by the time we have, okay, and I can assure you, it's just because we're full. Because so many people are telling me Zoom is full. Huh? So Everyone is complaining <laughs> that Mr. missed out. Mr. Mr. Munduru, we're going to make sure we pay some money so that our Zoom is open. Huh? I've received, <laughs> I've, received, uh, I've received over 50 
in boxes here, mm. telling me mm. Zoom is there. <laughs> so that means we could have had so many other people. Mm. So, but then we will see how we can solve these mm. so that we can have, uh, we can have uh, uh, more other people and more interactions sure. talking about different topics. And uh, we have also recorded uh, this, this uh, chat has been recorded. So somehow, somewhere, we're going to make sure we share it uh, to people so that you can listen it again or share to other people. Otherwise, I think because of time, I will say for now, thank you so much for your time. I'm glad I've been here. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Mr. Jawada. Um, I am really, really... I don't know the best word to, to really describe, you know, this feeling, but you have, you have really opened our eyes. Um, for people that are on the platform, you know, like I really don't want to go back to what uh, Mr. Jawada has, uh, you know, already talked about. He's really opened our eyes. He's given us opportunities. And I hope each and every one of you has at least uh, picked a leaf you know, of these opportunities that Mr. Jawada um, has, uh, has shared with us, yeah? I know that one of us has picked something, you know, for me, of all of the things, um, of all the things that he's spoken, my attention was really on the opportunities. I really love looking at the opportunities, where I'm going to get the money, where I can invest, you know, uh, for short term and long term, you know, to make money, to build sustainable wealth. And Mr. Joel has really given us the opportunity. We've not paid him, you know, but the opportunities, you know, have been laid out for us. So guys, it's up to us. And uh, because of time, um, there are people who would want to reach out uh, to us again. If you go in the chat group, there is a link uh, for this program. We've put a link. Uh, for Family Uplift Uganda, uh, please go. It's a WhatsApp link. Go and uh, register. Yes, Femi Nature Uganda has put it right there. Uh, go and uh, sign in to our WhatsApp group through that link so that we can keep on this conversation going on. Um, and then also so that you guys can, you know, reach out, reach out to us. For people that are uh, having issues with financial management, again, I will say, uh, financial management and then also business development, we are opening the academy early next month, which is like a week from now. So you're going to, uh, you're going to get these mentors. Mr. Joel will be one of our mentors, I'm really sure. Um, and many other people that you'll see on board, many other experts and uh, business gurus that we are going to have on board to let you through this uh, series, you know, for purposes of building a uh, sustainable wealth. So thank you so much, everyone who has, uh, who has been on uh, from the beginning till the end. And uh, again, thank you so much, Mr. Aita. I don't know if you're still online. I'm on. I'm on. Okay, Mr. We can't say thank you enough. Thank you so very much. And uh, I've seen people asking, can we have you again? Um, I think we'll talk about that after the session. Um, maybe we'll have him back again, and which I'm sure, you know, he might come back. So I'm positive about that. Definitely, I'll be, to make we'll be glad to, to, to have more of these chats. Uh, new to okay. actually, if you can uh, note down some of those pertinent questions, especially the mm. repeat ones, we can have another one uh, talking typically about that. Uh, okay. I, I, I really wanted to to talk w when we have another uh, subject, another time. I wanted to talk about real estate, mm. particularly how people can actually yeah. do that business and make money out of it. Mm. Uh, hello, Joel. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, my hand has been up. Uh, my name is Adrian. 
Yes, my, Hello. Name has, um, uh, my name is. Yeah. Debbie, I, I think you can go briefly and then Mojuma summarizes for us this. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes, thank you. I had actually wanted the, uh, particularly to have a suggestion for our next discussion, uh, yes. which is what uh, Joel has just uh, hinted on. Uh, mm -hmm. I and many other people who attended this discussion are interested in uh, the real estate, the savings and the real estate business. So which is something I would suggest uh, should come in for our discussion for next time, particularly following this. Thank you. Okay, that is noted. We will uh, we will let you know about uh, our next uh, our next um, meeting. Yeah. So just keep on following our social media handles: Family Uplift Uganda, Feminature Uganda, the Innovation Village, and also on our WhatsApp uh, statuses. Okay, for those who have our numbers, and then also in. In our WhatsApp group, you know, for those that have signed in already, um, there is a lot that we discuss on a daily basis. Every day in our WhatsApp group, we are talking about this thing. So please sign in through uh, the link. Uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, uh, attending the meeting. Thank you again, Mr. Jawada. We are sure that we are going to back with... Um, you know, all these uh, investment opportunities, real estate. So we are just going to plan about it and then we will let you know. Thank you so much. Right. I think uh, for now, because of time, yes, we are ending our meeting here. For anything else, uh, we will communicate. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll link again. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.